today's video is going to be a little bit different. I am doing kind of a talk through video instead of a normal time lapse. Um, I'm going to be painting this um, IKEA Lazy Susan to be like a watermelon. So this is just kind of a cutesy, like more craft than art, but um, I thought I'd work on this and then answer a question that I get a lot. So the theme of today's video is um, basically I'm just going to be talking about my journey into how I became a full-time artist. So if you're unfamiliar, I, um, I do paint full-time. Um, it's my full career. It's been full solid income for about two and a half years now. And I've been painting full-time or I mean, I've been devoting myself career-wise to painting for, um, close to five years. So anyways, um, I thought I'd talk through how I got here, what my schooling was like, um, yeah, and see if that could be any help. I get a lot of questions about this and I got a really good specific question this morning. So I thought I would, um, tune in here and yeah, just catch up and talk to you guys. Um, one little <laughs> disclaimer is I'm not a business coach. I'm not, um, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs about every kind of art school. Um, I am one person and I, I've learned a few things on the way, but, um, I definitely, what I say isn't like, <laughs> my advice isn't the end all be all. Like I, I'm an artist, I'm a painter. Um, and so I've seen some stuff, but please take everything I say with a grain of salt. Know that there are an infinite ways to get into the career you desire. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what I did. So thanks for watching. Um, yeah, and I hope this is helpful to someone. Okay guys, so I already went in and sanded. Um, there's like a little layer of varnish that usually comes on these, I think, or I'm just roughing it up. But I took this, um, I guess like a sandpaper brick. I think you can get them at Home Depot. Um, I don't know where I got that. But anyways, uh, I went ahead and sanded the top of it just to kind of loosen up and create some grit. And so now I'm gonna go in um, with my first layer of paint. Um, yeah, so, okay, when did I start, when did I know I wanted to be an artist? How was that something I was working towards? Well, um, I kind of always wanted to be an artist the same way all little girls want to be, like, a singer. <laughs> I just sort of thought it was, like, an un, like, I loved art, I loved painting, specifically I loved drawing as a little kid, like, I remember doodling for hours and hours and hours. Um, but I didn't think it was a legitimate career. I grew up you know, um, working class at best, uh, legitimate <laughs> poverty at worst. And so the adults that I knew, you know, maybe they could play guitar or maybe they like were good at art or stuff, but like those weren't things you did for a living. Like for a living, um, you worked at a fast food place or you worked construction or you worked as a nursing assistant or, <laughs> you know, you had, um, you worked at a temp agency. So, you know, the people I knew, um, it just didn't seem like, like art was a legitimate career. I guess the takeaway was, sure, I wanted to be an artist in the same way that I wanted to be Mariah Carey. It was um, aspirational, but definitely not something I thought would actually happen. So that's kind of how I was as a kid. Still did art. And when people asked what I wanted to do, I said I wanted to be a singer and a, a an artist, <laughs> but I didn't take it very seriously. Um, and then, you know, in middle school, I didn't take the art track and at my school, you could either do um, band, orchestra, choir, or art as your fine art. And I always do choir. I loved singing. <laughs> I was never especially good at it. I was a pretty decent choir singer, but, um, but it was fun and I liked the social aspect. So I did that. And so I did that in high school too. I um, took the same thing. You could pick kind of one of those tracks to do um, for your fine art credits to graduate. But you, um, so I just, I stuck with choir. So that was that. I, I wasn't especially good. I wasn't especially passionate about it, but that's just kind of what I was familiar with. Um, and then when I was a senior, I just needed easy credits. <laughs> And so I took um, general art. And so like I say sometimes like I didn't take any art classes in uh, high school and that's a bit of a misnomer. Um, but I will just say like, <laughs> I think I was the only senior in that class. And uh, it's not that I didn't learn anything, but it was just, 
it was, uh, I was, a, I was a senior and I was very tired of being in school and <laughs> that's kind of how seriously I took that class. Um, but anyways, I, I, I didn't think, you know, I still wasn't thinking that I would be an artist at that point. I didn't even know if I would go to college. Um, again, I just didn't know that college was, you know, I always tried to make good grades to go to college. Um, but like all of my peers kind of were and by the senior year most people who had sort of talked about wanting to go to like the local state school um, They were either having kids or they unfortunately were mixed up in the wrong crowd or like the lucky few um, Went to community college or we're gonna go to community college and there's nothing wrong with community college <laughs> I that was what I was kind of like that was my best case scenario um, in my head at the time when I was 18 um, but a little bit of back story. I was also a, um, runner. So I ran cross country. I did it just cause I loved it. Um, and part of me certainly hoped that it could pay for school. But, um, again, I didn't think it would pay for school. I sort of, that was like, you know, I hoped for it, but I didn't know if it happened. Um, and it did. I got a call from a coach at a local university. It was really lucky. I think the only person that recruited me with this was this one coach. And if you're familiar with like sports and recruitment, like usually you have like a lot of options and you pick. Nope. Out of the blue called me in February and I was like, um, yeah, I'll go to college. <laughs> that's a great idea. So, um, that's how I lucked into college. And so I didn't pick my school, um, based on like looking at what had the best art program or anything like that. I just, it was a really, um, like a strike of luck and fate kind of situation. So I feel like when it comes to people asking me, how did you choose your school? I'm always just like, um, I was going to keep working at Andy's, which is like an ice cream place. Um, and maybe try to go to OTC, which is a technical college. Um, and, and then I, then I got a coach from a, um, a call from a coach. So <laughs> I don't have advice cause I didn't do that. Um, but it was a really kind of like when I did get the call and I was like, okay, so I am going to go to college. Um, here, let me show you where I'm at on this guy, by the way, if you want to see updates right now, I've just made kind of a gradient. So I used uh, a little bit of cadmium red and titanium white for the middle. Um, and then I added more and more titanium white as I got out. So it's like an ombre. And now I'm going to go in with like a white and a cadmium yellow and a little bit of that red. Let's see, where's that? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, so I said, yes, I will go to this college because it was my only option. And um, yeah, so when I got there, I remember, again, I'm not like preparing, I'm, I'm hoping to go to college and trying to make good grades, but if you if anyone's familiar with like, I don't know, kind of like low income mythology, like or not mythology, um, mentality, like you're all, you're, tr you, you make good grades and you try to stay out of trouble. Most of us were good about that. But like when push came to shove in America, anyways, by the time you got to college, like it just financially for a vast majority of us, like just wasn't going to happen. Um, and so college had always been this really abstract thing for me. And then when it like, when it became apparent to me that I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna go to college, this is gonna happen. Um, I became very overwhelmed and felt very insecure and out of place um, very quickly. Like my kind of issues with classism sort of only ever popped up there <laughs> because this was a nice private liberal arts university. And the irony is that it was only probably 10, not even 10 miles from my high school, um, but it was like another world. It was completely, um, you know, just different. So because I was so overwhelmed, I had no, I, I felt really insecure about my intellect. Um, just, you know, I, I spoke a lot different than I do now. And um, Hillcrest is kind of, or this college, or the high school I went to is notoriously subpar. Like it's just, it's underfunded. And anyways, um, so I got scared and what I did was I said, I, you know what, I'm a college athlete. I don't think I'm going to have time for a legit or not legitimate. I don't want to say that art is legitimate. Obviously I'm making a living out of it, but, um, you know, I, I knew that maybe the smart thing to do would be to get a business degree or, um, 
you know, maybe look into pursuing medicine or something. And like, certainly like I like science. I like history. I entertained poli sci for the longest time. Um, but I just didn't think that intellectually I could keep up <laughs> full stop. I just was like, I don't know if I can do it. Um, partially because I was insecure, but also partially because, um, st as a student athlete, you, um, and I still had to work my fast food job. I just knew I'd be maxed out, <laughs> like fully maxed out. So I chose art as a major, um, because, and like, I don't, it sounds so bad, but I, you know, it's a fate thing. I think it happened for a reason, but I chose art because, um, I knew I had a knack for it and I quite frankly thought it would be an easy major. Um, of course it ended up being a very difficult major in the sense that like I spent a lot of time in the classroom. Um, but I'm glad I did that because I do think it was like, I was most prepared for that. Um, major and it ended up being something I was so passionate about that like I didn't mind putting in the work um you know I wasn't a bad student but I was never like an exceptional student like I really struggled with homework and I don't know I just uh so art was a it ended up being like a perfect fit so again like one of those like fate type things <laughs> um but anyways yeah I uh I yeah I became an art major and I loved it and you know, the major at my school, it was pretty much just about learning technique. So it was an inter interdisciplinary program. So it's a liberal arts school. So it's not like just an art school. So it's four years. And I took a lot of, um, I took, you know, prereqs. So like math 101, science 101, you know, a bunch of history courses and philosophy courses. And I minored in Asian studies, which was actually super duper fun. I took Mandarin and you know, if I'd had the funds, I would have gotten to go to Beijing and stuff. So it was a really cool program. Um, <laughs> the reason I chose that as a minor, by the way, was I was such a hick. Like I had like almost literally never left the Ozarks my whole childhood. And I was like, I should learn about something that isn't like middle of America. <laughs> so it was for me, it was like my only way I could like travel. So I, I loved it. I loved the history classes. It was really fun. But anyways, um, yeah. But so for art, I took six semesters of painting and um, I took a bunch of like crossover interdisciplinary art classes. So sculpture, um, foundations of design, a uh, bunch of photography classes, um, printmaking, just like all kinds of um, different art classes. And they were really fun and really fulfilling and <laughs> I loved it so much. Um, and yeah, painting was kind of my go-to. I ended up, I had a painting professor, his name's Todd Lowry. I'll try to like link him below. You should follow him or just say hi to him. He's like truly one of the best humans, like mentor, like he, ha having him as a professor, like I think changed my life. So I will say a little nugget of advice, like you don't have to be in the best art program as far as like it's always ranked number one to have a fulfilling art experience. Like it really only takes a couple of really key faculty members that are like devoted to it. Um, so if you, if you do an art, a tour of a college and you find a faculty member that you really click with, um, like genuinely, and I know it's hard to do like in an initial meeting, um, just keep that in mind because it wasn't a very robust art program. Um, they're not known for art, but I learned so much from just him specifically and his passion. So anyways, um, but yeah, so I had him and he was, outstanding, just really devoted to teaching and helping students learn and was a very good technical painting professor. Like he was really good about teaching us all the technical ins and outs of painting. Um, and so anyways, yeah, I had him, I had a great experience with art, but we learned absolutely nothing about how to run a business. <laughs> Is that surprising to anyone? I feel like every time I ask, um, y'all like, what was your college experience like? Um, the number one like feedback I get from people is like, oh, it was great. I learned, you know, but I didn't um, learn anything about how to run a business. <laughs> and I think that's pretty par for the course, at least, I don't know about like super recently, but for people who've graduated in the last 10 years and I graduated five years ago, four years ago, five years ago, um, you know, within a decade. So Anyways, yeah, that was definitely my experience. Um, 
you know, our painting professor took time to like really talk to us. And so certainly I knew that there was a whole other component to being a full-time artist. And I remember at the end of my senior year, he pulled, um, you know, I graduated with a group of like four other painters. Um, and he pulled us aside and he was like, you know, just so you know, like an art career looks like, you know, different for everyone, but like, it's going to be a lot of like hitting the pavement and it really kind of matters what city you live in. And, you know, so this was 2014, so six years ago, simple math, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, and at the time it was pretty true. Like you really had to live in New York or, you know, Southern California or San Francisco or maybe Chicago, Miami, <laughs> one of those cities or an international city um, to get seen because me going and pounding the pavement in person and bringing your portfolio places and, you know, more importantly, he emphasized um, networking in person um, was just super important. Um, that's how you got your footing in the art world. You Maybe you found a mentor or you were lucky and could get a decent gallery right off the bat. Um, that's kind of how you had to do it. Instagram was a thing. Like it was, you know, I had it all through college, but it wasn't what it is now at all. Um, and so I remember with that advice being really scared, being like, I don't know, you know, because I didn't know where I was going to live. Um, you know, I, I thought maybe I'd stay in Springfield. We, my husband and I, we got married right after college. So you know, weird time, but we, we were thinking maybe we'll move to Atlanta. Um, we wanted a bigger city, but we just didn't know where he's a writing major. I'm an art major. So we were like, well, we can't live in, you know, a tiny little Midwestern town. What are we going to do? And so we thought about, you know, moving to a bigger city anyways. Um, oh, here's an update on this, by the way, painting the edge, this nice green color, but yeah, so we, um, kind of didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> Lincoln and I, that's my husband. And, um, you know, when I graduated, we moved to Austin. He got a job at a sports media company, um, which is great. And so he started working and he worked a ton. Like if anyone's worked at like a media, smaller media startup or not even small, but that culture is insane. Like you just work your butt off. Like, I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. The first couple of years he worked there, he probably worked like legitimately 80 hours a week because he's covering breaking news and anyways so where okay where did that leave me I had this I graduated with art um, degree I had a pretty decent set of skills knew nothing about business um what am I going to do with my life <laughs> and uh yeah it was a really tough moment for me um I had a full mental breakdown <laughs> so I started seeing my therapist um, yeah, I basically graduated, I had no clue what I wanted to do. You know, I had all this kind of baggage from childhood and felt really lost. My husband was never there and because he was working and that was fine. But like, I just was in this new city with no friends or family and, you know, uncoped with trauma from childhood. And I was, you know, I, I think that's like the perfect recipe for a mental breakdown. <laughs> And, um, anyways, I wish I could say I just, I turned to art and it saved me, but I did not. It took me a year and a half with no art. Um, and in that time I had worked shoe store, Instacart, um, a nonprofit jewelry company where I did end up having like kind of a stint as a graphic designer. So like I, my major was fine arts with a specialty in painting and graphic design. And so I was able to use that. I couldn't stand it. I hated the sedentary nature of it. I hated working on a computer. Um, I didn't like the work culture. Like the office was really like, I don't know. The pe I had actually some really good um, coworkers, but the office was just like half of the energy you spent working there was around drama. And it just like, so not my style. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, oh yeah. So it was, a, it was a challenge, and I was still coping. I was starting to go to therapy and um, kind of uncover some stuff and heal some stuff. So it was, um, I remember that, that year being really hard, 2015, um, the end of 2014 and 2015 were like definitely the hardest like adult years of my life. <laughs> and so um, during that time, I found a therapist, and then I had my son Knox. I had him at the very end of 2015, um, year, you know, and I turned... 
24 at the very end of 2014, December of 2014. So, um, yeah, I, uh, basically I had my son and then two months later was January 1st, 2016. And I said, at that point I felt so lost and I had no clue what I was doing with my life. Um, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try painting one painting a day. And that sounds really sweet, but the motivation wasn't like, I miss painting, I'll get back into it. My motivation was, I was so lost that I was like, do I even like art? Did I just do art because it was the easiest degree and now I'm kind of paying the price? Um, so the whole impetus behind the one painting a day was, sure, it was a little bit of like, I needed some consistency in my life, but truthfully, a lot of it was just, is, um, is art for me? <laughs> So I had as much faith that I would come out the other end being like, oh yeah, I tried it for a year and um, it was hell and I did the bare minimum. Um, and now I know I don't like that and I'll just keep looking for my purpose in life. But uh, if you followed me for a long time, the rest is history. That's how I started my art Instagram. And I'm now up to like almost 200,000 followers and it's like, you know, a career. Um, so obviously it went well. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so a bit of a jump, um, it is now five hours later? No, six hours later? Yeah, it's way later. <laughs> I started recording this in the morning and then I had a baby doctor appointment and still pregnant, but it is many, many hours later. So, um, <laughs> if everything looks different, if I look a little more disheveled, lived in, it's because, um, I am a little more disheveled and lived in. So anyways. I'm gonna keep going with my story. I ended talking about um, why I started my one painting a day um, project in 2016 and where that got me. So, okay, cut to the end of 2016. Um, that was a crazy year. I um, was raising Knox and um, learning a lot about myself. It was my first like full year of therapy. And yeah, I, I learned that I loved art, that it wasn't, <laughs> you know, my worst fear of not liking art as much as I thought I did um, was disproven because I really did enjoy it. I loved it so much. Not only was I proud of myself for making art, um, one painting a day, but I found a community. I got better at my craft. Um, yeah, it was just really, um, rewarding. Uh, so at this point I'm doing lines like this and this is kind of what it looks like now. So turning into a watermelon, but it's all dried. Luckily that's the nice thing about, I guess, taking a long break, but <laughs> anyways, um, did I make any money that first year? Uh, I made, um, I had one deal at the end of 20. I wasn't trying to pursue it as a career, uh, up until this point. Um, so how, how was I living? I, I was pretty much full-time taking care of my son, which, you know, was only possible because my husband, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, <laughs> I wasn't necessarily a kept woman. It was, uh, I was still having to do uh, graphic design gigs and photography work. And uh, my husband was doing Instacart in addition to like random job. Like we both had like career changes that year. He burnt out really bad. <laughs> I can make a whole video over burnout. Um, and you know, we both kind of like scrambled to pay bills that year. It was a really weird year for us. We learned a lot. Like I wouldn't take it back. Um, but yeah, it was, we, I mean, that's how I learned a lot of my technique was just trying to save paint and save money. So I was teaching my workshop and I feel like every other tip that I was saying on camera, I was like, Oh, I learned this. Um, basically from having to save paint. So anyways, that was a rough year, but a rewarding year because both of us started doing kind of what we loved. So he was like freelance writing and I was painting and we just were eating beans and rice and didn't have health insurance and Knox was covered. But anyways, it was just, uh, it was a wild year for us. <laughs> and 2017 was a little bit different. Um, oh no, my gig. So I, um, through family members on Lincoln's side, um, was able to do um, a bunch of art for a community health clinic. They commissioned 10 paintings that were pretty large 
and it paid $10,000. And that was like the very end of the year I got that. Um, I got the payout, I worked on it all summer. And um, yeah, that was wild. I was like, oh, you can make money with this. And so um, beginning of 2017, I started saying, okay, how can I turn this from a hobby into a real um, career? And part of it also was Knox was getting to an age where um, I, could do stuff again. I don't know if anyone has, you know, lethal babies, but um, the first year they're kind of attached to you. I used to call him Barnacle Boy because he lived on me. <laughs> and uh, I started having a little bit of time to devote to not only the art, but the marketing and the business and the objectives and everything else that comes with running a business. And so 2017 was the first year that I consciously pursued it as a legitimate career um and i set up an etsy that year um, i may have set it up in the end of 2016 but i didn't start pursuing it until um until 2017. uh that year i also started doing giveaways and like um my following wasn't very big 2016 2017 i never i i gained followers really slowly i was still posting once a day or more um but I never broke 2000 until 2018, <laughs> or maybe it was like the very end of 2017, but um, it was a tough year as far as making money, but it was a breakthrough year for me as far as my craft. So I feel like that year I went from a, a very amateur, like maybe I had some education, but like I was still very green, <laughs> um, to a place where I started to feel like my art was representing like what I wanted to say all along. So it was a really good year for me craft wise. It financially was another rough year, um, but I, I had a lot of trial and error. So this was, I started shipping things in 2017, um, shipping things to different parts of the country because of my Etsy shop. And I learned a lot through trial and error, <laughs> how like not to ship things. Um, and how to ship things. Again, another video. Um, I learned a lot about customer service. Um, obviously, I'd worked jobs where I needed customer service skills, but like refunding and, um, you know, different things involving like packaging and um, contracts and stuff like that, I started to kind of get a taste for. And then, um, so that was 2017, just to be concise. Uh, January of 2018, I worked with this um, artist, like, it was a group of artists who wanted to help other artists, and they namely did, like, street art, so, like, spray paint art, but um, they had an, um, a residency-type program for emerging artists in Austin, and every, it was one month long, and I had access to a studio space, and um, I had... One every week we talked about social media was one week, um, marketing was another week, um, SEO for your website was another week, and um, making contracts and legal stuff was were other weeks. I forget it was four four or five weeks, but um, anyways, all of that information just sunk in. Like I already I had at this point I had two years of making art and like one year of like trying to sell the art. So whenever this information came along, I wasn't entirely new to this. So I was able to very quickly implement, you know, I was already making one piece of content every single day. And so I only had to like modify my social media strategy and it like, it took off. Like <laughs> it was insane. I feel like all the work I had been doing, like posting every single day and doing stories and giveaways had been like building. And then when I got this like little set of information, so like time of day to post, um, content, you know, weekly arts and just different things like that, um, it like shot me into the stratosphere. I remember by August of 2018, I had 20K. And I think by the end of the year, I had like 50 or 70K. So it was like astronomical, <laughs> caught me off guard, really did. Um, but it was great. I mean, because the more people who follow you, um, authentically, the more sales you get, which I, I think that's why people, you know, want to have an art following with a lot of it because there's some truth to that. Now I will say that you don't have to have a big following to sell work. I know a lot of artists who have, 
you know, one or 2000 followers, but they have high end clientele and they have connections and they engage with their small group and they make as much money as me. <laughs> I'm actually, for as far of a reach as I have, I probably, you'd be surprised how much I don't make. <laughs> um, I'm fine with it because I, I, I'm missing out on things I know that like, I just don't have time to do, so, you know. Um, but yeah, anyways, it was a really good year for me. Um, you know, 2018 was, again, another year where my art started to like solidify. I started working on bigger projects and yeah, it was, uh, it was a good year. Anyways, hold on, let me find a different brush. You guys are leaning against a brush stand, so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, it was a, it was a really good year. And then, so, okay, cut to 2019. Um, that was the year I started to do more than just paint an original and then sell it. Like, cause that had been my MO for, you know, years. <laughs> Successfully or not, that was what I was doing. Um, and then I started thinking passive income, um, workshops, uh, eventually they kind of got canceled, but like speaking. <laughs> so different things that interested me. Um, I started pursuing those things and that was really fruitful in 2019. 2019 was the first full like year where every quarter I made uh, more than I did at like that graphic design job, <laughs> which I mean that didn't pay well, but um, for me it was like, oh, now I'm making actual income. Um, again, I think it would shock you <laughs> how m small that was, but to me who I grew up low income and you know, Lincoln and I had been you know, a family of three living on well, $30,000 for years. And so, um, for me, it felt like, <laughs> like it was, it was amazing. Um, I was able to start saving. Um, you know, we were able to, you know, not be living paycheck to paycheck, which is amazing. So, um, yeah, 2019 was great. I learned a lot about marketing that year, just through my own stuff. I read a few books that were pretty influential. Um, again, I would love to like make a video where I talk about like marketing stuff. Um, and yeah, it was awesome. It was a really good year for me. So anyways, I think, I think we're done. I think I'm going to call it. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to finish my story cause I'm, I'm, it's 2020 now and I'm in halfway through 2019. So, um, <laughs> I, uh, where was I? Yeah. So I was figuring out marketing. I started doing workshops, um, which were very fruitful. Um, I only did a few of them, but, um, they were really good and they taught me a lot. Um, I started, um, I had, let's see, what else did I have in 2019 that was really good? Um, there were other passive income. Oh, I started making my own prints. No, I started selling prints through a company and really directing people there. And that was a good source of passive income. Um, and then at the beginning of 2020, I brought a printer and that's been a really good move. So anyways, all this to say, <laughs> I'm making this video really long and I wanted it to mostly be about my path and not necessarily what I'm doing now because I want a different video for that. Holy cow, I'm sweaty. <laughs> it's so hot in here. It's, uh, like 101 degrees outside and it's even hotter in here. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's so hot. I'm going to try to finish this really quickly because I'm, uh, I'm sweating and I'm hot and anyways yes so okay so 20 so 2020 I guess we're in August of 2020 now so we're like getting through the year so I'm gonna include it but um, I made the decision in January of 2020 to get a business coach um, I've been eyeballing it for a while but it financially didn't make sense until after 2019 um, and so that was a great step in the right direction because there were some marketing things that I was able to work out um, I was able to start speaking about my story a little bit more, um, and it kind of gave me the, um, push to start doing more video content. I got a lot of like, should I go to college? I would have to devote a whole video to that. And even then, like, I can't tell you what that looks like. I was able to go, so backtracking, like what and how and where did I get here? You know, with art, you have, there is a, you know, depending on what you're doing, there probably is going to be a time where you're making art without directly making income. I have yet to find someone who is able to come to the game so evolved and so good in their artwork that they can sell it right off the bat. Maybe you can. I, I'm not the, I don't know everything. I know very little, <laughs> but, um, 
I think my advice is that you're gonna have to find a place to make art without it being your income for a little bit. Whether that's a few months, a couple of years, a decade, I don't know. <laughs> for me, it was two and a half years. Um, it wasn't no money, but it was you know, enough to pay for art supplies and justify me staying home and clipping coupons. <laughs> so, you know. Um, yeah, so looking back, you know, the things that really were important for me was um, a couple of big things. The, a big takeaway from this video is to make sure that you have a firm boundary around your creative practice. I feel like if I had started all of this with like the intent to make money right off the bat, and like, let me just say, I, un I understand that. Like if I hadn't had Lincoln and I didn't have like those graphic design side gigs and engagement photos and all the like side hustles I had and you know, the, I guess you can call it excuse of um, having to raise my infant son. I don't know where I would be because I had the luxury of like a year or two to kind of figure it out before like crunch time. <laughs> Cause again, we were like uninsured. It was, it was, yeah, toasty. Um, but anyways, I, you know, I think if you can make it a side hustle, if you can, um, you know, and I know that that's a term, it's, it's a touchy subject because like side culture, side hustle culture, it can be toxic and like, it's not for everyone, but if you can find a way to make art without it being like, I must sell this and you're not bringing yourself as a marketing person to your easel, um, I think that can be really liberating and that will get you on a fast track to finding the art you're most passionate about, which is going to be your biggest reserve. The art that makes you happy is going to be what you can tap into when you're spending half of your working time marketing sales, W2s, you know, QuickBooks, all the other not fun stuff that comes with running a business. If you can find um, the art that makes you really satisfied, like it kind of balances it out. Um, the other thing, and I know I'm saying this from like, you know, privilege. Um, but if you can try to go and spend as little money on getting into debt for college, um, I had a running scholarship, I had Pell Grants, and then I had some ac academic scholarships. That was the only way I, I was able to go to school. I, my, my option wasn't take out student loans. My option was either have school completely paid for or not go because I, <laughs> I just didn't know how anything worked and I didn't, I knew I couldn't get into debt if I was gonna just stay working at Andy's forever. So for me, it was, um, you know, I think I look back and I think having college be affordable or free, I, I, that's so hard, especially if you're an American listening to this, like it's so messed up. But if you can spend as little as possible getting the art information, so whether that's art school, whether that's, you know, some classes at a community college or a workshop or multiple workshops, Whatever you do, um, try not to go into debt because you, it's so hard creatively to like have to make art if you have like a $500 a month debt payment on top of everything. So I know that's easier said than done. So I, I'm saying that advice fully aware how much privilege is behind that statement. So I, this is why like I'm not setting this up as like, this is your advice. This is, this is my story. But um, being able to live off of such little money for two and a half to three years um, was key. <laughs> we could, you know, scrimp by on very, very little. Um, and I don't know if I had had debt payments if we could have done that and I probably would have had to have gotten a job and put knots in daycare and like my life would be drastically different. So, you know, take that as you will as advice or whatever, maybe just a rant about how unfair <laughs> everything is. But um, that really helped me uh, reaching out to mentors. So I had that um, program where they sat down and talked about the legal, the contracts, the social media. And it was just like a one day meeting with those different people over the month. And um, but that like really changed my life. Like it was a, a little bit of information that I was able to then run with because I had already committed to a daily practice and making artwork. Um, Find mentors. I'm always answering questions in my DMs to people. I have people who I have a long, year long, years long <laughs> um, dialogue with and I just give them information because they ask. <laughs> they obviously can't do that with everyone, but um, people are willing to help. And especially I find artists 
who know how hard it is and know how tough it is to get into the art world and make money in the beginning, um, reach out. There's a lot of people who are selling marketing information online, but part of their marketing strategy is to give away free information. So like, for example, I have my workshop, um, nothing I'm teaching in that workshop, I haven't taught on my free Instagram account. It's just curated. Um, but if you're a diehard fan and you watch all my lives, my YouTubes, um, you have gotten what they have gotten and you haven't paid a penny for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, look at people who are selling marketing stuff and follow them. And even if you can't afford their marketing stuff, watch what they're doing. They will give away free information because that's a marketing tool. Um, books are great. Um, I, again, I wanted to devote a whole video to it, but building a brand story and the creative curve are both really good. Big Magic's a little bit woo, but it's also a good read. Um, you know, keep in contact with the community, try to network, um, whether that's like for the purpose of art or just, um, you know, if you're a babysitter, like ask people what do they do for a living and like, wow, I like these paintings. Did you know I paint? Like just put yourself out there, be outgoing, which I'm probably talking to a bunch of artists. So stereotypically, that's probably gonna be tough. <laughs> I know it is for me sometimes, but put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to call yourself an artist, even if you aren't making all your money as a, an artist. Um, if you are in a place where you're willing to sell commissions, tell people you're an artist. <laughs> Simple as that. Don't, you know, especially you women <laughs> fems out there, like don't let, you know, be confident in, in the fact that you're an artist. If that's what you are and that's what you want to be, say that you are those things and you will become that, like it manifests and stuff. So anyways, yeah, I, I don't have a ton of like practical advice, um, in this video because it was more of a story. Um, but yeah, I hope that you are able to learn something from what I went through and, you know, have a little bit more insight into at least one person's story, um, of how they got to be an artist. So yeah. Okay. What's the takeaway? Um, mostly I just hope that you guys, you know, there's anything helpful in my story of how I got here. Again, this isn't like meant to be a instructional how to get from point A to point B because everyone's life is so different. And I, again, fully understand how much of a lucky break and um, how privileged I was to be able to go um, to college. <laughs> so I, I understand that, um, but there are multiple ways to learn and there's lots of people giving out free resources. Um, so I hope that you glean something from this video, <laughs> watching me sweat through it. I hope you learned something if you have to put up with this, but um, yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Um, this is how the lazy, lazy Susanna turned out. Um, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I just, yeah, at the end I went and painted these little, little stripes on here. They're more decorative than accurate, but that was fun. I don't know. So thanks for being here. I'm going to turn on the AC and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.